Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. Today we're going to be checking out this digital microscope. This is an Andenstar AD249SM. Now full disclosure, this was sent to me for free by Andenstar for review, so uh, I'm going to do just that and I'm going to be completely honest about it. I do get a number of emails from companies asking me to review their stuff and most of the time it just goes straight in the bin because it's usually some exercise bike or some crappy VPN service and I don't want to waste my time and I especially don't want to waste your time on something that isn't relevant to this channel. So digital microscope, I was like, yep, this could be good for soldering, so let's find out if it actually is any good for soldering. So here's the box, pretty plain Jane, nothing much going on on the outside. I did take off some shrink wrap that was on it because it had the address on there, but uh, the box itself wasn't sealed, so yeah, if we open it up, this is what we get guessing this just lifts out. Okay, packaging's pretty decent. We have a user manual. I'm sure we'll look at that a bit closer later. A components list. That's always good to have. Make sure you've got everything that's supposed to be in the box. And this is the 10-inch LCD screen. So this has a 10-inch display. Uh, it also does HDMI output, I think, at 4K. And uh, the maximum magnification is 2000x, I believe. Apart from that, there is an AC adapter. It's very nice that they included a proper Australian plug. It looks to have even the uh, protective black stuff around the pins. So that's very nice detail there. There's a thing. Some spare parts. Okay, cool. Cables. More things, there's some, like some slides there, not really that relevant to what we're going to be using it for though. 32 gig SD card, just random unbranded. Remote control, everything is pretty neatly packaged, I'll give them that. Ah, yes, there's two lenses, I think there's three lenses in total. So different magnifications from each lens. Um, I'm only seeing two lenses in the box, perhaps the other one's already attached to the microscope. HDMI cable, that's nice. Inclusion as well. This looks like a USB, or oh, maybe it's for the lights. So yeah, it's got little buttons to adjust the lighting. Back here, I think we have to get the rest of this out first. Clamp. Okay. All right, more clamps. And this should be the base of the unit with the lights already attached, I see. Okay, nice little adjustable arms, that's always good. And the mounting post. And that is it. Now I'm not going to film me potentially struggling to assemble this, we'll just jump straight to it being assembled and I'll tell you how it went. And here we are, fully assembled. It took me all of about two minutes to put this together, so uh, the instructions are very clear and well laid out, so uh, no problems there. There is this part which I haven't put on. This is a little slide stand, so there looks to be an LED in the bottom of it, and there's a power connector at the back here. I'm not going to be looking at slides, so uh, I'm not too fussed about that. And likewise, there's a couple of holes in the bottom of the base here, that attaches to these clips that are included in the bag and that holds this little slide thing in place. So I'm not going to be worrying about those things. Um, yes, the other lens was already attached to the camera, so that's where that is. So here's how everything looks at the rear. The USB cable heads into the display up here and the other part plugs into the base or optionally into this thing if you're going to be using that. So um, yeah. This goes straight into the base, and then you've got your light controller. One thing I will mention after I assembled it is I was a bit confused about how to put this thing up and down, because in theory it should slide all the way up and down this post here, but uh, as you can see, it does not. And what I found was we have to loosen this screw up here, which isn't mentioned in the assembly. Push that forward a little bit so that it clears this post here and then we can actually move that up and down. So I'm guessing it was that way when they packaged it just to fit everything inside the small box, but um, yeah, it'd be good to note that in the instructions. 
I mean, not a huge deal, but just a little thing that I noticed. Obviously, we've also got this clamp here so we can stop it going down too far. And this adjustment here actually brings the lens and screen up and down. It feels fairly smooth. I mean, it's it feels like it's not going to go anywhere on its own, so that's always a good thing. So, let's hook this up to power and see what it does. Obviously, I'm going to use the included power supply, but I will put a little uh, USB power indicator on there, just so we can see what kind of power it's consuming. And this might be a bit tricky to show on camera, because the power point's all the way over there. Okay, it looks to be alive. Got a welcome screen, and... Okay, there's time, there's a Wi-Fi indicator. Obviously, everything is going to be very out of focus. I think this lens is like the short distance lens, so I have to get up pretty close and then obviously get some light. There we go. That's part of my finger. Uh, I can see that it's drawing about 1.1 amp at 5 volts. Let's see if we can bring up this brightness. All right, so I think that's the LEDs at full brightness, which are... Yeah, they seem decent. And it's drawing about 1.4, 1.5 amps at maximum brightness. So I should just be able to power this off my little uh, power bank here. Let's try that. There we go. And now you should be able to see, yes, it's drawing 1.2 up to 1.3, 1.4. Now, because we're probably not going to be looking at things up that close, I'm going to swap the lenses over. They do have nice little notes on them that say object distance 90 to 300 millimeters. So that's probably the best one for PCV work. Uh, the other lens is four to five millimeters. So that's very up close work. And this one is 12 to 320. So we should just be able to remove these two screws holding the lens on. And then that just slides out. And this one will just slide in. Maybe not as fast as you'd like it if you're swapping lenses all the time, but straightforward enough. All right, so I've got this little board here. It's probably the size of a 20 cent piece if you're in Australia. Fairly small. Let's see if we can focus. All right. There we go. I will say that it's very sensitive to bumps on the bench and on the stand. So everything does have a bit, a little, bit of a wobble when you bump it. Mm. Okay, well, the image is looking pretty damn clear. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. Can't really fault it there, but yeah, definitely the wobble isn't great. I think this footprint here is a 1208 size SMD component, so it's pretty big in the SMD scale, but um, yeah, it's nice and clear there. You can see all the detail in the, um, the pads on the board. So I'm going to spend a bit of time getting familiar with this thing. I'll probably test out the HDMI output, see what that's like, and also the recording, all that kind of thing. And then we'll be able to have a look and see what this thing is really capable of and whether or not it does a good job of it. So now I finally had a chance to have a good play around with this microscope and overall I'm pretty impressed by it. I did require it services when I was doing the mod to the Xbox 360 because I stuffed something up in that mod and I certainly wouldn't have been able to come back from that if I didn't have this microscope. Now would a cheaper microscope have worked for that? Possibly, but this one does have a few things going for it. So let's go over some of the useful features and to do that I'm just going to use the HDMI output because most of the time if I'm using this thing and making a YouTube video I'm going to be using my capture device rather than trying to actually film the screen. At the moment we're just looking at some through hole components and I will say the image looks very good. It's very sharp, crystal clear and keep in mind that all my videos get uploaded to YouTube at 1080p, uh, 25 frames per second. That's just my setup. So um, we're not going to be able to see any 4K differences. But I will say that when I tried out 4K, I couldn't really spot a difference anyway. Either with a display like the OLED that I have that actually accepts 4K because my capture device here doesn't. 
or the inbuilt screen, I couldn't really see any benefit to going to the 4K resolution. So I currently have it set for full HD 60 frames. And yeah, the update rate is perfect. I'm probably going to leave it on this setting. When I went to QHD, which I think is probably 1440p, and UHD, which is 4K, um, you'll notice that the image becomes grainy. And that's really about the only difference I can spot. So I would recommend just setting it at full HD. I think it produces a better image overall. So the whole 4K thing is kind of useless on this camera, in my opinion. Some of the other neat functions on the remote are the ability to adjust the contrast. So it does have three different contrast levels. You can also invert the image and you can even go black and white as well if you want. There's also options to adjust the exposure level. Let's just bring that back into color. So they can all be quite handy and a lot easier than trying to use the buttons on the screen here because the image is shifting around every time you go to push a button. So I'd prefer to just use the remote. I will say that it is pretty handy to be able to tilt this screen from about 90 degrees to 180 degrees. So no matter what height you're sitting at, you're still going to have a head-on view of the screen. One unfortunate thing is when you're using the HDMI output, the internal screen is disabled. I would really like to have HDMI so I can be capturing stuff, but still have the screen here so when I'm, when I'm working on stuff, I'm not looking over at the capture, I can look at the screen on the unit. And it does also have digital zoom. Now again, once you hit, I think it's 1.9, Everything gets grainy. The whole image goes all grainy the moment you hit 1.9 digital zoom. And that seems to happen on all modes. So again, that's a bit random, but overall the digital zoom seems to work just fine. It's certainly convenient if you don't want to be adjusting the actual microscope itself. Looking at some SMD stuff, I think this resistor is a 1208 size, so it's pretty big on the SMD scale. For reference, this is what an 0603 looks like at this scale. So um, yeah, it's got decent enough magnification while still leaving enough room to actually be able to work under this thing with your soldering iron. And again, it doesn't seem to have any lag. So it's not like one of those really cheap USB microscopes that has like a second of lag. So by the time you finish soldering something, everything's already changed. This one seems to have like instant updates. So there is no lag from what I can see. One thing I would have really liked to have on the remote is the ability to adjust the actual light intensity. So you still need to use this thing in order to adjust the actual lights, which is kind of annoying because it's all tied up to a bunch of other cables. It'd be a lot easier if you could just control that with the remote. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this microscope. So I think there's only one thing left to do. Now, would I recommend this microscope? Well, yes and no, it really depends on your budget. So let's talk about the price of this thing. And and Star sell this through their AliExpress store and also their Amazon store. And it looks to be on AliExpress for 250 US dollars and on Amazon at the moment for 270 or 280. If I had paid that much for this microscope, I'd be satisfied. I wouldn't be like over the moon about it. I think the better deal is actually the 7 inch version, which is $100 cheaper on AliExpress and I think $90 cheaper on Amazon. That seems to be the better deal, especially if all you're losing is a bit of screen real estate and you've still got the HDMI output. And to be honest, like you're going to be pretty close up to this screen all the time anyway. So it's not like, you know, you're miles away from the screen trying to solder something. It's pretty much going to be right in your face. So I think a 7 inch screen would be more than adequate. The other benefit I could see with the 7 inch version is it's probably going to bounce around less because this screen has a bit of weight to it. I imagine the 7 inch version is going to be a little bit lighter and therefore it's not going to jiggle around as much when you're working with it. That being said, I didn't really have any issues using it when I was doing the Xbox 360 video. So the little bit of shakiness, it's just something that's more annoying than anything else, but it didn't actually cause me any major issues. I can certainly recommend having a good microscope if you're doing electronics work, um, especially with SMD stuff. Note that I didn't do the soldering on this board, I didn't build this thing, but it certainly shows up any minor issues or major issues 
um, something you wouldn't be able to see with just the naked eye. So having a good microscope, definitely recommended. Having this particular one, the 10 inch version, yeah, it's good. I'm certainly glad that I've got it. But saving some money and getting the seven inch version is probably what I'd recommend. Um, assuming that everything else is equal and looking at the specs of the two, it does appear that way. So maybe look at the seven inch version uh, if you're considering this particular one. But again, overall, I'm certainly happy to have this on hand. So I think that's about it. Let me know in the comments if you've got an Anon Star microscope, if you've ever dealt with them, what your thoughts are. Uh, was it this particular model? Was it a cheaper model? Was it a more expensive model? Um, let me know. As for now, I think that's going to do it. So a massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon and thank you all for watching. Bye. that.